Okay, this this second one, um, I perform it a lot. I'm, I'm gonna retire it soon. Uh, it's it's about it's about self-esteem, and it's about makeup. Uh, it, it's got a bit of a backstory. The setting is a man and a woman are about to go out for the evening or the day or whatever. So he's there to pick up. So obviously he's ready, and she's not. But obviously it's a fictional tale because women are always ready on time, as we know. Obviously. Mm, yeah, obviously. Science, science fiction. Right. So, uh, so they're standing there and he's looking at her and she says, How come you never take off your ties? I said, Because you never take off your lies. Wake up, you're fine. You only need to make up your mind. She says, I, I get that you're the poet here, but allow me to break down my makeup philosophy. I worry because being colorless means being plain old black and white. And those two extremes are simply too extreme for me. So why don't you, Mr. Poet, tell me something philosophical about looks? I told her, look, if it's philosophy you want, you should really be about books. But okay, I'll buy it. To me, it seems pretty apparent that for you, colorless really means transparent. That more than a disdain for being plain behind color, you seem to find a cloak for your pain. She says nothing to object, but allows me to stand there and witness her process. So she stands on the foundation of the sculpture that she's making to base herself on it. A little embarrassed that I can see all this, she, she brushes her cheeks with blushes. She's sweet, but even in this she lacks honesty because her blush is paradoxically some permanent shade of 12-hour modesty. <laughs> and burdening herself of the epiphany she keeps in the bags under her eyes, they shadow, like they're hiding the light of her soul behind thunderous skies. And then she grabs that pencil and lines them up to that ideal image. In her mind she's struck and the lengthened lashes of her mascara help her to ignore the mass scarring of her soul. Oh. So that off the top of her head, she's retelling her tale, but it's just scarring the highlights. Uh -huh. Her red lips stick together as though joined in agreement that they'll never spill the secret of who she really is. Oh. She forgot the concealer, but at this point, she doesn't really see the need. <laughs> so now, nearly ready to leave, but now like she's looking for lost change, she's rummaging through her brassiere, searching for leverage against the world and settles on her cleavage, uh, finding the idea most strange that someone might cleave to her without it. Oh, yeah. So that even while her push-up bra uh, boys her memory glance, my memory hands me images of a time when she was as simple to read as black ink on white paper. She was a picture whose texture had a uniform feel, but she's pushed up far out of my reach on her platform heels. She's done. She's made up a fairy tale. <laughs> and, this, and, this, and this construct of her imagination says, tell me I'm beautiful. To which I respond, if the eyes are the window to the soul, then I am a disappointed peeping Tom because I was keeping warm off the heat yours generates like a supernova's best and a return to tell you that you ma'am you with your slightly colored contact lenses have a soul which is overdressed but you're beautiful and have been so from the beginning not the first time a man told you how deep his desire was to hold you but the very beginning not when your body first put it from prepubescence to adolescence and time chose you to feed new essence but the very beginning when you and I know that it's odd my dear but it goes back to when you were truer than Athena, springing from Zeus's head. You are God's idea. Aww. A prime example of his workmanship. A poem pitted to parade his penmanship. And as you go through the motions from fetal position to fatal position, your entire biography has been written in the flawless tip of his endless calligraphy. That's your spirit, the mind you taint, and the body you paint. So she said, you're saying I should take it off? I'm like, no, no, keep the colors, I like them. Um, I'm saying that the human vessel is inherently imperfect so that maybe she's born with it, and maybe you need to take care. Love the skin you're in, you're both worth it. What I'm saying is, as long as the option is open and the potion is potent, sip slow. But when the years make their mark, don't let it break your heart, just say amen to the omen. <laughs> but if you insist on battling these seven signs of aging, please remember the timeline in your face is only making your story more worth the paging. Oh. That crow's feet and laughter lines are in the nature of a human being. And they only serve as evidence that you have lived, that you have breathed, that you have been. Tell me I'm beautiful, she asked. I wish she understood that she's amazing with or without the mask. So what is your problem with it? She finally spurts. It's not the makeup I mind. It's just alarming to find that many who wear it are blind to the fact that that which has the power to attract lies not in the face, but the makeup of the mind. You see, beauty is an altar before which we all go. But as you approach a throne, bring small sacrifices. Change your face, but don't alter your ego. And when you wake up, you'll find the only thing you needed to make up was your mind. Thank you.